So, I like to take active viewport off, if, especially if it's not too complicated yet. Um, if it's got a lot of stuff going on, then I'll turn that on so it'll play on only the active viewport. Sometimes it's nice to be able to see it in the, all the views. <clears throat> so I say okay. If I hit play, you can kind of see that it's going through. And nothing's happening. So I haven't told it to animate anything yet. <clears throat> so this area down here <clears throat> this little key button does anyone know what that might do? It's set a key. So in animation we have <clears throat> keyframes. So we have we set frames and then we may have it be different on those keyframes and it'll figure out what's di what the difference is in between. Like so like frame A. No, we're not we're not doing cell animations. Like like old Disney stuff, they actually drew every single frame. Right? We're not doing that. That's called cell cell animation. What we're doing is Like this is frame one, and that's frame ten. So on one we'll tell it to be here, ten we'll tell it to be there, and it'll figure out what's diff what what it does in the middle. So these are our key frames. That's that's really fast. What? Between one and ten, that's like yeah. What well, whatever frames it is. And, and one frame we'll tell it to start out someplace, and another frame we'll tell it to end up someplace, and it'll figure out what's in between. And we'll we'll do some control on how it gets in from point A to point B. <clears throat> but we're not going to tell it, okay, frame one, you're right here, frame two, you're right here, frame three, you're right here. Why not? Why, why not we want to do every single frame? It take takes a lot of time to set up. And, it, and you won't be as fluid when it moves, right? And it's not fluid, because if you get your spacing off between frames one and two, if that space isn't equal to this frame between two and three, or between three and four, it's not going to look nice. But if you have it, we have fewer keyframes. <clears throat> just at the important points and let it figure out what's between then it'll be nice and even. So <clears throat> we're going to start this ball here and so I can do that I can set keys. Right now it's not doing anything because I don't have anything picked. So I pick my ball, I can set keys, you can see right here I have a little red, a green, and a blue line. You see that? The red is position, green is rotation, blue is scale. So I need to blow that up. green, blue. So the red lets me know that there's a position change happened there. Green a rotation, blue is scale. So I'm going to come and I'm going to make it go all the way to the end of my animation to my frame 450. I'm going to turn on auto key because auto key means that whenever I move something it'll make a key for me and add it to the animation. So now I'm just going to Grab this ball here. I'm going to bring it over to this point. The camera didn't move with it. Oh, did I undo that? The camera should have gone with it. I, I think because I made it a free and then it went back to target. Yeah. So I'll just take, turn that off. So I'll go back to frame zero. On the target link to the ball. There we go. So I pick on the ball. You can see at frame 450, I have just a red key. Because all I did was move it. I didn't change the rotation or anything to it other than that, right? I'm going to hold this real quick. 
So one of the things I can do on this Where's the center? The center point of my sphere is where? It's in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. So when I move it, or I do anything to it, it's going to affect it by the middle point. But when I balance this ball, I'm going to want it to do that, right? Yeah. Am I going to want it to, bounce, to change from the middle? No, no. no you want to change it from the bottom. You want to change it from the bottom, right? So how can I change where this point is that it's moving from? I can change that center point of that thing, right? So I go to, to the hierarchy and affect pivot only. So now the pivot point there, I can grab and I can move down. I just want to make it kind of good. So I just move that pivot point straight down, and so now it's the bottom point. And I'll turn effect pivot off, go back to scale. So now that bottom point is staying still. The rest of it's moving. So I go down here, that point. So at the end, I want it to be on the bottom. That. So right now it's, it's going this, but is that, why did I pick the end point first? Why didn't I start making a bounce? Because as you had the bounce in the middle, it's a uh, calculate where it's going to be at the end point. So, it's, uh, so you have calculations. For so you have an idea where you're going to end up? Yeah. Because yeah. by doing that, that changed my x and y coordinates for me all the way along it. So that way it's going to move. In a, in a seamless motion from that point to that point. Because now all I really care about is the Z, right? How far up and down it is. Yeah. And so now when I go back to say frame 20, I know where the X and Y is. I know the X and Y is there. And so I can just move it up and down to make it bounce according to how I want it to bounce, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> And it's kind of on a slope already from being up high to being down low. So maybe, I'll, maybe I'll go here for my auto key on. So I want to affect the animation. What happens if I turn auto key off and I move this up? So if I just move this up now with auto key turned off, when I go to the end, where is it? It's got the same proportion because I moved that up there. It moved the whole thing up. It, it, didn't, it didn't move just what was in frame one up. If I want to move where frame one is, I need to turn auto key on. Now I can move that up. And now it's still going to be where it was at frame 450. Okay? So you, you can see my, I already have kind of a, a height change going on. So, what should I be doing now? Probably get ready for the first bounce. Maybe, or maybe I'll set keys for my high points, right? Because if I go in and I go to here to like frame 40, and I make that down here, now look at what it's doing as I go through. It goes from there to there, and then it just stays until there. <clears throat> so I'm going to go in, I'm going to set my high points. So maybe at frame 60, set key. And then at 120, set keys. the 
height points be getting closer and closer together? Sure. We're just I'm just doing a little example here. And now I can go back to kind of halfway between those. Pull that down, right? Or I can just go to my z value makes it zero. Here, go to my z value, get zero. And I, can, I can take these keys, because I didn't center it, I can move it over, and I can just move it back and forth to change the time that it's at that position. So. Can you copy your keys? Um, See what happens when I play this. And the speed and timing is kind of off a little bit. But look at how it's bouncing. Is that how it should be bouncing? sine wave thing going. Yeah. It doesn't, is that how something bounces? So. No, it usually goes bing like that, right? Okay. <coughs> and so, if we go up here to the graph editors, we've got a couple things. We have the dope sheet, which when you click on something, oh, there's that sphere, transform, position, you can see it shows me where I have different keys lined up. So if you want to see where there's keys for something, you want to be able to zoom in on it to actually see keys for different cells. So in case you actually did keys on cells right next to each other, you can go in here and, and erase them. Uh, so you go, where do you go to find it? Now it's in curve ed graph editors, dope sheet. We also have what's called the curve editor. Which now, um, um, yeah, if you click this, I think you can get to them there. So that's a mini curvetter. <coughs> it's not the full thing. And so, here I'm actually seeing lots of different, so I can kind of go in and look at just the X position, just the Y position. The Z position, rotation, scale, different aspects of the object. Um, so if I look here, you can see that it really wasn't a straight line from start to finish. So if it, before when I started, if I made it faster at the beginning and slower, I could have made it move faster here. On the X and the Y. Also my Z, you can see the kind of the shape down at the bottom of these has got that that shape that we don't want. So when I click on that point, I can kind of change that. Or I can change it to that.
straight. That would help a little bit. That's actually helping a lot. Remove the timing of that. So, I don't know why it's not letting me change it to the the unequal. go in and I can adjust the curves like that. Now when I play it, that's kind of a more of a realistic bounce. Except it's still not squishing, I know. So let's go back. It just hits it real quick. It just hits right there real quick and goes up. So maybe we'll make it That's still moving really quick right there at the bottom. So now I can go back into that dope sheet. Zoom in on this. <clears throat> so now I can move these ones. a little bit better. So that's where the dope sheet is. I can move things in and out, change which frame it's on. shift and I'm just copying it over. Oh, no one's supposed to do that at the top. It's supposed to go over the next one. squish there and I just need to put in the position keys. So I can copy them just by holding in the dope sheet holding shift and dragging keys around. You just need to make sure you hold shift before you click on the key to copy the drag. Can you click on more than one by holding the um, control? Um, hold control and pick more than one, yes. Okay. And then you can hold shift. So yeah. 
that'd be a nice way to do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so maybe I wanted to copy the the Z position of these also. Or so that way it pulls the Z up just a little bit. So it makes it kind of even. <clears throat> so you see how it kind of works? The, the dope sheet there. So that that just be how you can make your your bouncing ball. Um, I want to show you a couple other things. I'm going to turn auto key off. So, I'm going to get out of the camera. I could also go in to the curve editor. And on one of these things for this box, I can move this more and see it. <clears throat> see, I wanted to make this box spin. I could go in here to the, the Z rotation, right click, and I can assign a controller. And so I can tell it. First off, I can just go in and add keys. So I can add a key at zero, and I can go over here and add a key and tell, tell that key to be way up here. So now that's going to spin. So if I make that value way up, so I can zoom out. You can type it in on the value. No, because, um, yeah, if I go, we'll go down. If I go over a little bit more, I can see the actual value thing here. I can tell it to be 720. So now it's going to do two full revolutions in that time before it's frame 200. So I can already make that frame 100. So now by the time it's frame 100, it's going to go around twice. So if I wanted something to go um, back and forth, if I wanted to turn, then come back, then turn. If I'm doing that, take that point off. I can assign this waveform. It looks like a sine wave. And I can tell it that over the course of 40 frames, I want it to go to 360. And then say OK. So now when I play that, it's going to keep turning back and forth. Maybe slow it down, maybe. So maybe over 200 frames. Yeah, that's going back and forth. Mm -hmm. You can see that thing went crazy. The waves there. <coughs> so there's a lot you can do with that. So you can use that like on bird wings flapping or something, you can have them go up and down. Anything you want to happen, happen at a regular interval, you could also have it be just the positives, so it's not going negative. Um, you can tell it to be only greater than zero. You can start off the phase different too. Yeah, and you can change the shape of it. And you can stack them, so that way, um, So I can have one that's like that, and then I can have another one that's like that. Um, so 
So now you can start at a high value and go to a low value and kind of have it work its way down. You can, you can see what it is. So you can stack them and, and make them work together to get kind of weird stuff. Um, you can also make it happen so like on the like on this plane. Um, I could add a wave to it. There's my little wave. So I could go back in. I could turn on my auto key, come to the end, change my phase to 20. Now that wave is moving. So anything that I can put, it, I can see, I can animate. Just by turning auto key on before I change it. Whatever it's on auto key, it'll have that. It doesn't. It'll put a gray key in the timeline, <clears throat> but so I can tell you, if you right click, you'll see what it is, but you can't change it. So you could go in, go back and find where it is, or you can go back up to the graph editor in the curve sheet. Now I wave. There's the phase. Adjust these if I wanted to. <coughs> I could also go into the amplitude. And I could find, find that. So now, <coughs> instead of being just five for amplitude one, I want it to, over a course of 40 frames, I want it to go to five. So now you can see that it's alternating between being in line with the other one and being off of it. And I can go to this one. And I can tell that one to be over 30. I want it to be an amplitude of 4. So now those waves are totally out of sync with each other. And so it's not looking quite as mechanical. Maybe make it. Actually, that kind of leveling out. Maybe I don't want that. So I can change those values. So, so I need to get something that's not as, regu as regular. I want to add something else in that's. whole thing to go up and down. So I could change the Z position. So now that whole thing is going to go up and down. So Line it up for the top of the waves actually, if the ball hits the top of the waves. Mm -hmm. So, by changing that, maybe instead of just doing the wave, doing the ripple, or doing a couple other waves, mm -hmm. just going different directions, you might get something that looks a little bit more, more than just a one way wave. <clears throat> so, that's where that that's where those controllers come in. Uh, so, questions? So, you can just move things by sending the auto key, moving them, rotating them, or by assigning controllers.
and you can animate anything that you that you can see. Questions? So, um, oh, we wanted to make a camera follow path, right? Or do we want to do that on? Do I do that Monday? Yeah, let's do that Monday. <laughs>